What's up traders, Anthony Cardelli here. And in today's video, I'm going to go to the charts and explain why I'm bullish crude oil and why we could potentially see new highs in crude before the end of the year. Now, before I get into the charts, I wanna give all of you an idea of the different crude oil markets that you can choose from. First off, if you're looking here on TradingView, I'm gonna be using the symbol CL1 exclamation point. That is crude oil for the continuous contract. Remember, crude oil expires every month. So when you're looking at a futures market like crude oil, you wanna have the continuous contract up. And so this way you see all of the months continuous on the chart. So this way when you're doing your charting from way back, you see all of the different expirations. Now the crude oil contract CL is going to be uh, at $10 a tick. And every tick is going to be one cent and it moves 10 cents per point, which would be a hundred dollars. So if CL goes from right now, it's trading 74 and a quarter to 74.26, that's going to be a $10 move. So from 74 and a quarter to 74.35 is a hundred dollars. Now, also on CME Group uh, listed futures, you also have the E mini crude oil. Now, the E mini crude oil is symbol QM1. And that is going to move in four ticks per 10 cents at 12.50 a tick. I know it could be a little confusing. So it's not going to be moving in pennies. It's going to be moving in different increments. It's going to be moving in four ticks for $12.50 a tick um, for a 10 cent move, which is going to be four ticks. I know that once again, just trying to understand that. It. So it's going to be $50 for every 10 cent move in crude oil. And then there's also the micro crude oil, which is symbol MCL. And that's one tenth the size of CL. So CL, as I mentioned, is $10 a tick. So micro crude oil is going to be $1 a tick. So if you're on CME Group's website, you can learn about the different specs and contract sizes. So uh, if you're interested in trading these crude oil futures products, uh, it gives you multiple ways. There's also event contracts uh, as well. So. And there's lots of different ways to access crude oil futures. Now, for today's charting, I'm going to be going over the CL contract. That's the contract that I trade when I'm trading crude oil. Now, I also want to mention that if you're on TradingView, uh, you can connect your broker and trade futures right here on TradingView. And the broker that I'm using is TradeStation uh, to trade futures markets on TradingView. Now, I pulled up a daily chart here. Now, I start with a daily uh, in every market that I'm looking at because I want to get that perspective of what has the market been doing for the year. So we pull, pull crude oil up uh, on the daily. And when you look at it on the daily, I put a few things up here on the chart. I keep it very simple, but I definitely have a few things up here. Number one is you're going to see this orange looks like a moving average, but that it's actually an auto anchored VWAP to the beginning of the year. And so all it is, is a VWAP that you anchor to the first day of the year. Now, I like this because it helps me get perspective of what is a market done in performance from the volume weighted average price from the first day of the year. And when you look at crude oil this year, you could see above it, below it, above it, below it, uh, just really all over the map, not really trending in any uh, specific direction. As you can see, actually here, we're not too far uh, from where crude oil opened the year. So it's relatively unchanged. It's actually down on the year and it's actually spent more time below the auto anchored VWAP from the beginning of the year than above it. So it's really a weak market, right? So the next thing that I'm going to show you is my beacon indicator. It's free and open source here on TradingView and it's what I use to really box in ranges and understand uh, what the conditions of the market is. Uh, so Beacon is really based upon Bollinger Bands, 20 period, three standard uh, deviation Bollinger Bands. And when those Bollinger Bands come in, it boxes off an area. I've done detailed videos on this. You can see more of those on my YouTube channel or right here on TradingView. And so I use these levels of support and resistance. And you can see the red is resistance, the blue is support, and the yellow is my neutral. And I'll go over uh, more detail as to how I'm using that in, in just a moment. The other turquoise lines that you see are also auto anchored VWAPs. Now, these VWAPs are to specific areas uh, of interest to me. We had that big gap up, if you remember way back when, when the OPEC 
uh, had that announcement. We had a rally in the market in crude oil. So I anchored a VWAP to that high, okay? So I want to see what the market's done relative to that VWAP since that price. Then the market made a low, and so I anchored a VWAP to there. And the reason why I do that is because when you have a VWAP to a high and a VWAP to the low, you could see what the performance is uh, in the market based upon after it made a high or a low. And so if the market is sustaining trade above or below those VWAPs, that gives you a good indication of how the market price action is versus the volume weighted average price. So it's a really good look uh, of bullish or bearish, uh, especially in a market like crude oil right now, which has really done nothing. And if you just looked at the chart from the beginning of the year, just a price action, you wouldn't say bull or bear trend. You'd say no trend sideways. Uh, the, other th the other view app that I have in here is from the recent high, if you go back into March of 22, when we had all that news about Ukraine and everything that was going on in the world at that point in time, I anchored a VWAP to that high. And the reason why I do that is because I want to see on a relative basis what the market has done since it's made a high, okay? Especially in a market that you think could potentially go higher, like I do with crude oil. So those are my points of interest. Now, I want to start off with something a little bit more on the macro side to give you an insight as to what I'm looking in the macro side of things to understand how that feeds into the technicals. Now, I am not a macro person, but many of you not probably know Tracy, um, shy girl on Twitter, and she is one of the best when it comes to talking about the oil markets. She puts out a free weekly blog on placeyourtrades.com. It's free. You can go there and check it out. And every week I read Tracy's blog on what her th thoughts are in oil. She also does the spaces every Wednesday uh, on the energy markets and she gets some of the top people in the industry. So I listen as a trader, it's about knowing your strengths and weaknesses. So I listen to what Tracy's saying and these other experts in the macro side and say, what are, sh should we be watching in the crude oil market? And what Tracy put in the blog this weekend really piqued my interest. And she talked about how you have OPEC plus cuts and rising demand will drain fuel inventories. Um, and just all of these different things that are happening right now in the marketplace that would support stronger oil prices. And she said, I cannot stress enough to keep an eye on this. Everyone seems very complacent here. Everyone's talking about how uh, inflation's coming down and you're seeing that across the board in PPI and CPI. But then again, when you look at oil, it's actually been strengthening. And if oil starts to strengthen in price, you can pretty much bet that that's going to cause inflation across the board. Because although may, people may just look at inflationary prices uh, and crude oil may not spill over into consumer prices for other things, but that's not the case. If crude oil goes up, pretty much everything goes up because of delivery. And there's so many reasons about that. You can read more on Tracy's blog as to her reasons. So now we have a macro backdrop that says, hey, Anthony, keep an eye on the price of crude oil, not only just for trading the price of crude oil, but also for its implications in inflation and how that could trigger um, things to happen with the Fed, uh, other CPI and PPI data. It's all intertwined here right now. So you have to be keeping an eye on the price action in crude oil. And so when you look at the chart, I always say, Macro first, chart second. Is the macro bullish? Tracy and a lot of the people she uh, has been interviewing say yes. Say, okay, so let's take a look at the chart. Remember, I'm using my VWAPs and I'm looking at my beacon indicator here. And here you have the market uh, at the middle of last week crossed above my neutral, which is 7509. And it got above that auto anchored VWAP, which is 7453, which is pretty much where we're at right now. And it's also sitting above and crossed over those two other VWAPs I talked about. Basically, the swing high from the gap up and the swing low following that gap up. And when you look at that, when you add all of that up, right now, crude oil to me, in terms of price, is cheap for me as a trader, as a risk manager, to start looking at longs in crude oil. And the reason why I say it's cheap in price, because nothing is ever cheap if you have a lot of contracts on. But when you look at the price distance, you start to see if crude oil starts to come back, uh, which it has today, in between 7450 and I think 7130, uh, 33 here, you could see 
Uh, that's the bottom view app. That gives me an opportunity to step in and buy some futures or maybe even some options or potentially even some oil stocks or however you would want to look at this. And a lot of the way that I'll be playing this is going to be futures and options on futures. And when I look at this, I go, my uh, risk is a daily close above below 71.33. So my risk is a daily close below that bottom VWAP of 71.33. And that, for the most part, is a relatively tight stop, right? And so I'm actually going to be looking to buy some calls over the coming days. As the market starts to come back lower, I'll continue to look to try and buy some futures. Uh, a lot of that will be for day trading and trying to hold a small position for a swing position. Um, and and th that's what I'll be looking for. Uh, currently, no position as of just yet. I'm actually working some bids down below in crude oil just above the 73 area, thinking that because today it got below uh, this auto anchored VWAP of 74.53, and I saw that crude oil was pulling back, um, maybe I can put some prices in uh, to potentially get filled or towards the close today, if it were to close above 74.53, I might start to look at some options uh, heading into tomorrow. And so you have to be really patient with this because crude oil has been a sideways market to a downward market. And so I just don't want to be in a big hurry in execution. Now, the upside is to this trade is 81.87 is my resistance. So that to me is where I think the potential is. So when you start to look at this, it's why I can be pretty patient here, because even if I have to pay up um, in the high 74s or low 75s, I'd rather buy into strength than get too aggressive on a weekday. So I'm going to let pricing come down. But if it starts to firm up over the coming days, I'll be happy to step in and get long there because the risk reward is roughly going to be around two to four dollars of price risk for anywhere between four, actually between six and maybe we'll say eight points of potential price um, profit. And so it's a pretty good margin risk versus reward to the upside. So 8187 is my target in the coming weeks. I think that's very achievable. Um, and I think if we started to see any daily closes above there, uh, I would be out of most of my position at that point. The next place to look at would be 87.12. Uh, 87.12 is that auto anchored VWAP to the swing to the high of the last couple of years. Um, and so that to me is where I think the sellers really step in. And if you look at crude oil going back, Really, it's just an it's just a range bound market. So to me, um, getting back up there is not that big of a deal. It only take us back to price action going back maybe November of 2022. Not that big of a deal. Um, but uh, once again, there's still a lot of work has to be done in, in the short term for us to get there. So that's my outlook on crude. Um, very simple. Uh, it's just starting to come into play for me right now. So you're getting it before I've even stepped in to get into the market. Uh, and I'll probably follow up this with some live trades that I'll take and show uh, here on TradingView or on my other uh, channels, uh, YouTube or what have you, uh, of how I'll be looking to trade crude oil. Uh, because I think this is really the only opportunity that I see right now that's really stepping out and saying to me, you know, you, you should be forced to step in here a little bit, Anthony. I always say great trades are when they force you to step in. And the fact that crude oil is firmed up above these areas and pulling back in here, and if it holds them, this is an area that I really like. All right, everybody, trade well.